Okay, welcome to opening statement. Now, I just spent all day in an all day meeting, one meeting all day long, something they should probably make illegal, but the part that's relevant to you is that I was part of a couple of breakout groups and I went dutifully to my breakout group and I was chosen to present our findings. And I presented our findings to the entire group. And afterwards, this fancy consultant comes up to me afterwards. I understand that paid to be touchy-feely and encouraging. But and this is God's honest truth. He says, wow, that was really great. You had a theme and everything. Uh, folks, opening statements in many ways are very similar to closing arguments. So uh, I'm sure you'll be as spectacular at your opening statements as you were at your closing arguments. There are a few differences, though, but fewer differences than you might think. Uh, a key difference is you are just meeting the jurors. So uh, um, actually, uh, I'm going to suggest to everybody, uh, maybe Karen was one exception, everybody in their closing arguments needs to hit harder in their closing arguments. But your opening statements are a little different. Your opening statements, uh, the jurors have just met you, and they don't know whether you're a raving lunatic or not. <laughs> and hopefully they won't figure out that you are. Uh, so you do, you do want to be a little bit more restrained in your opening statements. Uh, and there are some, uh, emphasis on some, some limitations on your ability to argue in your opening statement. Uh, it, uh, the line between our, an opening statement and argument, it's, in, it's improper to really argue, uh, but some argument is permitted. So, uh, and I'll go so far as to say any good opening statement contains some argument. But you've got to tread the line cautiously uh, and you've got to be prepared for the possibility that the judge is going to give you a hard time about it. But it's not your job to be the judge's friend. It's not your job to be the judge's pal. It's not your job to please the judge. Jo judge. It's your job to win the case. So in your opening statement, you should argue a little, or some, or in some cases, as much as you can get away with, maybe you'll know how that judge tends to rule. Tends to rule on whether a part, whether an opening statement contains too much argument. But you want to argue some in your opening statement. So maybe an emphasis uh, slightly. What I'm saying to you is a little bit different than the book, uh, but only a little bit in emphasis, not in any fundamental way. But the. Uh, the other things that I've told you about closing arguments apply almost equally, almost equally. And you're going to be so happy to hear that I'm not going to repeat my closing argument lecture to you. But I will repeat some, and I apologize in advance, uh, I will repeat some of my closing argument lecture to you because a lot of it is totally relevant to your opening statement. Totally. So the uh, and it's a question of what's good strategy and how much argument are you going to be permitted. And if the judge interrupts you, well, boo-hoo, the judge interrupted you. If the judge gives you a hard time in front of the jury for representing your client, you're going to be able to deal with that and not let it damage your ego, or more importantly, damage your ability to continue on with that opening statement and to do a good job in the trial. So opening statements, much more so than closing arguments, have got to be really efficient and focused. And if you're going to go beyond a 10-minute opening statement, and I forget the number that the, uh, our eminent author of our book says, uh, but if you're going to go beyond 10 minutes, you've got to think long and hard about it. Because you're, uh, actually, at this point, the jurors are actually going to want to hear from you and are going to be paying attention in contrast to the closing argument, where they hate you and are sick of the case and want to get on with it. Here they're going to be paying attention, but you've got to be quick and focused or you're going to lose them. You're the guy that they're uh, uh, subconsciously looking for in this trial. 
So from the opening statement, you've got to be credible, uh, to, you've got to be sincere sounding, and if you can, you've got to be polished and good at it. Uh, but at all costs, you've got to, if you're not polished and, and real good at it, you at least have to sound like you believe in your client. And part of establishing that credibility is not to go on and on. Instead, is to be very disciplined and very focused and really, yes, quick. Opening statements should be quick. Really long opening statements are almost always a mistake. Get to the core issues quickly, uh, and yes, as with closing argument, show them that justice requires a verdict as you like it. And you're, you're persuading through content and delivery. So you've got to be quick and efficient, you've got to have really good themes and correct and proper labels, like calling the other side some uh, faceless entity like that corporation, uh, or that defendant, if you're the prosecutor, and call on your side by their names. Jane. I'm going to call it Jane, folks. Jane, this is what happened to Jane on that day in November. Humanizing your client. And emotion. You should, uh, these are not clinical things. This is about emotion. This is how people make decisions. And there's a statistic you probably already heard from many sources that jurors tend to make their minds up right away. So the opening statement is very important. And you should almost never, or either that or never, waive your opening statement if you're the party that does not have the burden of proof. So you've got that, uh, he calls it the impact, Professor Maui calls it the impact beginning. I think I've been calling it the modern beginning. Absolutely the same thing applies. No civics lessons. No, this is an opening statement, ladies and gentlemen, where I describe to you the evidence I expected here. It's like a roadmap of the evidence. I mean, forget that. That's crazy. You want an impact opening, you want a modern beginning that can be with some powerful excuse me, theme or themes. That can be with a dramatic event, jumping right into it, uh, or dramatic evidence, uh, or with emotion empowering the jury, like in a jury nullification case, but no civic lessons. And that can be, if you have to, with some inspiring story from folklore or something like that. Uh, if, uh, that maybe is not the most powerful way to begin your opening statement. But the opening statement, it, it, opening statement does not mean that we're in a classroom and we're going to be clinical and cold and <coughs> academic about it. Far from it. Uh, and you should, uh, you should be, the way you argue, you should be assertive, and if you can, be confident, but at all costs, to be, uh, to show fervor for your client, so that the jurors don't jump to some crazy conclusion that you don't uh, believe in your client. And you should be using uh, exhibit and visual aids and demonstrative aids. And if they haven't uh, been pre-marked and pre-admitted, you should raise it with the judge if necessary. Or uh, it would be better to raise it with your opponent and have something of an agreement on what can be referred to in the opening statement. And understand how that judge likes to treat those kinds of things. Are you going to need to get approval beforehand? Because nobody wants to talk, nobody wants to watch a talking head, and that includes you folks, and I'm sorry about that, but nobody wants to watch a talking head without some exhibits, without some impressive uh, things to show you, like this demonstrative aid here, which I did not plant here, I promise. I just want to pull it so it's within the camera here. What a great demonstrative aid. Uh, and we're talking, I have no idea what this is about, but if this were a patent litigation case, something about proto-physia, uh, proto-1x. Uh, this is going to wake up the jury, this is going to give them some context. This is, it just woke you folks up. I saw you nodding off. Uh, you should be using demonstrative and visual aids and exhibits. Uh, be real, be authentic. Uh, and use controlled movement. Maybe I'm a little uncontrolled this evening, uh, but controlled movement is what it's all about. 
not wearing a hole in the carpet, but not glued to the floor either. The, uh, and early in your career, and perhaps for most of the cases during your career, you should use zero notes. Now, I have, and it's not a cruel thing by me, I forced you to do closing arguments without notes. And there's a good reason for doing that. I've explained it many times, basically, to prevent you from being crippled by that crutch. Uh, I'm doing you a favor, believe it or not. But opening statements are so small and so self-contained that you should uh, definitely, in this, this stage of your careers, not use notes. And maybe, for, maybe, depending on the nature of your practice, perhaps, and your discipline, maybe during most of your career, for most of your cases, use zero notes. Because they, and it's, a, it's, a, it's one way to make them short, because they should be short. So, uh, uh, we get similar uh, reasons why uh, opening statements are weak from the textbook. Uh, and those are things like a weak first minute. They never ever should be a weak first minute. It should be pre-planned. You're giving a short talk. I hate to call it a speech because speeches are pompous and people with stuffed shirts give speeches. But you're giving a short talk. So the first minute should be pre-planned. Uh, and it should be powerful. Uh, I, I'm going to suspect that this will be the case today as well. Uh, lack of full use of themes and lack of use of proper labels. Themes, themes, themes. You, it's diff, it, it, all generalizations are wrong, including this one, although this one might be right. You can't do a high-end closing argument. You can't do a high-end opening statement without good themes or a theme and hammering it a lot. So in a 10-minute opening statement, we should be hearing what amounts to the theme, I'd say five times, five times easy. Five times easy. I hate to be so mechanical about it, but I'm going to suggest to you it's helpful for you to understand what you see out there uh, by the really high-end lawyers. And someone asked me to look on YouTube and come up with a, a closing argument that I thought was really great. And I'm still working on it. But I, every, you know, the, the trials on YouTube, the easy, well, the first 10 or 15 I looked at, they're all from high profile trials. And they're really terrible. <laughs> because, uh, well, I'm, I'm, the, I, I'm telling you, they're really terrible from my perspective. Well, they're, they're, they're not something for you to aspire to. Although I could give them to you as an example of something that's uh, disappointing. Uh, not uh, maybe terrible as an overstatement, but mediocre for what they represent. Uh, but that's, I, I'm not sure why, but perhaps because uh, the selection of lawyers in high profile cases is a function of the marketplace. And in many of these high profile cases, the lawyers are chosen, uh, work for free to get the publicity. And in many of these cases, uh, you have very high priced lawyers who haven't really tried a lot of cases. So I haven't yet come up from YouTube with a closing argument or an opening statement that I think is something to aspire to. And the course website uh, where they start the closing argument with me, please the court, I certainly recommend against that. Uh, other weaknesses, summarizing the evidence. Yes, it is the opening statement and to some degree you will want to tell about what the evidence is going to be. But if it's going to be Witness number one is going to testify that blah, 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 blah. And witness number two is going to testify that blah, 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 blah. Uh, and so on and so forth. You are frittering away your powerful chance to speak directly to the jurors. Uh, when you have the burden of proof and you are presenting most or all of the evidence, that presents something of a challenge. But perhaps there's a question in your mind, well, how can I do that if I'm, if I'm say, a prosecutor? presenting a case of a street robbery. How can, how, why, uh, how can I not do a witness by witness rendition? You can do it by doing what the jurors really want you to do, which is, if you find it necessary, it's not always necessary, by giving a narrative where you intersperse the pieces of 
what the different witnesses are going to say. So what happened to Jane Smith when she was walking along that darkened street? Uh, and you plug in a bit about the uh, alleged victim's testimony about what happened. You plug in a bit about the lineup testimony. Uh, and you plug in a bit about the DNA expert's testimony. But a chronological witness by witness opening statement, just like a chronological witness by witness closing argument, it might as well be death for the jurors. It's the last thing they want to do. The uh, opening, the, the last weakness. Sorry to disturb you. Um, how late does this run? Uh, it goes until uh, 7.50, but we're going to go, we're going to finish a little early. Do you have a class in here? No, there's some um, people who are supposed to do work on the balcony, and they're wondering if it would bother you if they were out there. Uh, it will bother me right now. Yeah, that's what but I mean. In 20 minutes, I can do it. 20 minutes? Yep. Okay, sorry. That's right. The, uh, I apologize to YouTube then. So the, <laughs> uh, the last weakness in an opening statement, uh, is uh, equally unforgivable as the first first week, which is a week first minute. Uh, uh, that's the uh, that's the first weakness, and the last weakness is failure to have a really strong emotional closing. Close, closing one minute. Uh, the opening statement is so important that you're doing your client a terrible disservice if you don't grab the jurors powerfully in the final minute of the opening statement. Because the rest of the trial, you're never really talking directly to the jurors. It is such a valuable opportunity, you cannot trigger that away. Thank you.